Hey everyone, I've been using VS Code pretty much since it came out. Today I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way to get you using VS Code like a pro. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to open up your project in VS Code. Um, now obviously you can just go down and open up VS Code, but I prefer to do this on the terminal and I think it's probably the quickest way to do it. Um, so let's say you're going to create a new project. So let's create a new test proj, new folder. Uh, now there's a couple of ways we can open this up. We can do code test proj, and that will open up in that folder. Or sometimes I like to do is to go into that new folder, and then you can open up from there by just doing code dot. Um, now VS Code is opened up and you can start writing code for a new project. If you're on a Mac like me and that last command didn't work to open up code, um, that's because it's not on your path. Um, what you can do to do that is do shift command P, which will load up the command palette, and then type in shell, and you have that shell command install code command in path. Click that, and you should get a nice message saying it's successfully installed. So next time you go and try that command, it should work. If you really want to become a VS Code Pro, then you need to learn the keyboard shortcuts. Now, to be able to get a handy cheat sheet, which you can even print out if you want to, um, you do Command Shift P. This loads up the command palette. From there, you can do keyboard shortcuts by typing shortcuts, and you'll get a, a help keyboard shortcuts reference link there. Um, press Enter. That will load up the keyboard shortcuts for your operating system. So in my case, it's a Mac, but uh, for you, it might be Windows. Now some great things you can do to help you navigate around Visual Studio Code. Uh, one of the things I'll show you first is uh, how to quickly find a file. So if you do Command P or Control P if you're on Windows, uh, this will load up the, the search files uh, window. So there you can type in whichever you want to find. So let's say we want to go to, I've got a weather forecast thing here. You can search through and find particular file results and, and go down and go to the one you want to. So let's go to the controller. Uh, scroll up here. So here you've got the um, file all opened. If you want to go to a particular line, um, you can do Command P again. And in this case, we're going to do colon um, and then type the line that you want to go to. Now, this is particularly useful if you've got a really long file. Um, so let's just say we want to go to line 38. Press Enter, and your cursor will now be on line 38. Another cool feature you can do to help you go through the code. Um, is again command P. This time I'm going to do the at symbol, uh, and here you can see the various functions that we've got in this um, functions and methods and names that we've got inside this controller. Um, so if you want to go to a function, obviously we've only got a get function in this one, but we can do get async, uh, and that will take us to this get method. So VS Code lets you edit multiple things at once, uh, and there's a few ways of doing that. Uh, so let's say we've got weather response here. Uh, now, when you double click on um, a bit of text, it's going to highlight for you every single place where that text appears. But actually, it's possible to edit all of those at once. Um, so if we do Command D um, or Control D on Windows, you can see as I click through, it's going to highlight each of those um, items. From there, if we start typing, we will actually edit all of these at once, which is pretty cool. Um, another way that you can edit multiple things at once is to use the uh, option click or um, alt click if you're on Windows. Um, this lets you place your cursor in multiple places. Um, so let's say we want to add a comment at the end of each of our, our lines of code. Um, so we're going to click here, we're going to hold down option uh, or alt, and then click on all the other lines of code that we might want to add something to. Uh, then from here we can just start typing and it's going to edit in all the places. Now this can be really useful if you need to update a bunch of things at once um, in different places in your code. One thing I do particularly like uh, doing is being able to update uh, several lines at once. Um, so if you do Alt Shift or uh, Option Shift, you can actually drag your cursor down. Um, so say we pick here, we can drag this down, hold down Alt Shift and then drag down the cursor and then we can add in like multiple spaces or whatever you wanted to do um, can be done. You can even, um, in particular if I'm editing a CSV file, you can edit multiple lines at once, um, which is quite cool. While we've got the cursor there, 
The other thing you can do is, obviously you can go through with the arrow keys, um, a character at a time. What's more useful is again, if you hold down option, you can actually jump to the end of each um, part. So it sort of ignores the spaces and, and goes through and jumps to those particular points. So previously we edited the response word there. Um, there's a better way of doing that, especially if you've got multiple references or something throughout your code. Uh, so let's say we wanted to edit this get weather async method. Um, so there's a great thing you can do here, it's called rename symbol. Um, so this is gonna link through all the references in your code um, that are using that, um, and it's gonna rename. So this is much safer to do than say a find and replace, which might end up editing something you don't want. This will only edit um, this particular method. So let's call it get weather async or get, get weather now async. Um, now it's gone through and you can see up here in the unsaved open edit, it doesn't save it automatically for you, you have to remember to save them, um, but this has gone and updated the weather client and it's updated the forecast with the, the new method name. Another cool thing you can do is, say you wanna um, cut a line out of your code, um, obviously you know that Control X will do a cut, or Command X if you're on, on a Mac. Um, we can take this whole line out, you don't need to copy the whole line, you can literally just have your cursor on it, do Command X and it'll take the whole line. Um, and obviously you can then paste that where you want it, um, such as they say we want it down here for some reason, you can put that in. Um, another thing you can do if you want to move around a particular line of code, um, is you can use the alt, hold down the alt key uh, and then use the arrows and this will move that line of code um, around for you. Now one thing I find myself doing, specifically if I'm uh, trying to debug something or I'm um, making something you know, obsolete, uh, is you might want to comment out a whole section of code. Um, obviously, you can do this just by you know, putting in your comments um, for each line, um, but that's a bit slow. Um, or obviously you can do the, the shift option or shift alt thing and go through and select it. But actually, there's a shortcut for it. Now, if you select what you want to comment out, you can do command forward slash, and that will do a complete section for you. Alternatively, if you just want one line, you can just do that while you're on the cursor's on the line. I often find when I'm browsing the internet, especially at work, I'll have 20 million tabs open. I find that on the same Visual Studio code, when I'm working on a project, I'll have 10, 20 different tabs open, all pointing to different things. Now, Visual Studio code gives you a great way to navigate between all of those tabs. Uh, so let's open up a few more things and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got a few more tabs open here. One of the things you can do to navigate between all these different tabs is to use control and number. Uh, now this should work on both Windows and on a Mac. So if we want to go to the first tab, do control one, and same for the others, control two, control three, control four. Another great feature you can do with tabs is to be able to pin them. Uh, so say there's some tabs that you always want to keep open. Uh, the way we do that is you right click on a tab and you can see down here we've got the option to pin it. Um, now what that means is that it will always be there. Um, so if we were to do here and do close all, then we still keep our pin tab open. Um, so it's, it's a great thing to just keep those windows there. If you want to close a, a tab that's been pinned, then you need to unpin it. You can just click it there, or of course, right click and un unpin, and then it'll allow you to close it. Now one thing that I find is that I, I'm often jumping around pieces of code. So say we started on our startup page, now we go to our controllers page and then we want to go back to where we were previously. And now you can do that by pressing control minus and that will jump straight back to the point of code that you last worked on. And now you can keep doing this and it'll keep going back to the different points, which is really cool. One feature I use quite a lot is code snippets. So the way this works, you can basically type in a bit of code and then it will auto complete what you want to type in. And a common one I do is a switch statement. Um, so let's type switch, and now you can see here the, the second option um, It's a switch statement. If you click on that, it actually auto-generate the, the main part of your switch statement for you. Um, this works with a lot of different methods. Now you can write your own. If we do command shift P uh, and we type in snippets, uh, we can do configure user snippets. Now there's a global snippets file that works across all instances um, or there's one specific to the project that you're working on. So we're just going to create a global snippets file here 
Um, you can call it what you want. Uh, I'm just going to call it snippets. And this will create your snippets file for you. Um, so it already comes with code ready for you to um, do. So in this case, it's got a print console example. Um, so first, we're just going to uncomment all of this. Now, this particular example uh, is obviously for JavaScript and TypeScript, um, but you can change the, the language scope that you want to use and edit it to what you want. Now, I must admit, I haven't written many of these snippets myself. Uh, what I tend to do is go to extensions, um, and from there, if you just search for snippets, uh, you can then find snippets for all of the top languages uh, and save you a lot of time in, in writing your own ones. If you find yourself writing a lot of HTML, one really good inbuilt feature of VS Code is something called Emmet. Uh, now, I think this used to be an external plugin, but now they've basically built it directly into VS Code. Now, the way this works is we've got a HTML page here and we want to fill it out. So what we do is we'll type HTML and you can see here we've got Emmet abbreviation. Now you can just click enter and that will fill out the tags for you, which is great. Um, but let's say we want to go a bit more. So let's say we want a, a body, not a biddy, a body with um, a div inside it. See, it creates both the tags, it creates a nested div for you. Now let's say we want uh, another div with uh, unordered list and say five list items. So you can do li times five and that will create five of them for you like that. So it's really powerful and it saves a lot of time if you're writing HTML. One thing when you're coding that you're obviously going to be doing a lot of is creating new files. So we can do that really quickly in VS Code. So if we right click and do a new file, Obviously, you can type in a new file. But say we want that in a, a nested folder, but we can actually type model followed by forward slash, and then let's say, let's say weather.cs. Now you see that's created our model folder as well as our, our weather file. This works with multiple nested folders. So let's do new file. I'm going to type uh, folder and then nested folder. Let's call it nested, nested, and then file.json. And you can see it's created the folder structure as well as our file inside there. Now, another way you can do new files is by doing command N to load up a new window. But you can see here that it's just a plain text file, um, which is a bit annoying if you're constantly working with C sharp or another language and you want the new files that you create to be in the same language. There is a setting for that. If we go command shift P, load up this and then type in settings. We can open up our, our settings file. And then the setting you need to add in is files.default language. So let's just add it here at the bottom. And do files.default and you can see it auto completes for you, default language. And if we do command space, it will auto complete. And in this case, we wanna have active editor language. Now, obviously, if you exclusively work with a particular language, you might just want to set that explicitly. Um, but this will use the language that you're currently using on your page. So let's get rid of our new file, go back to our controller and do command N again. And now you can see we have a, a C sharp file rather than a, a plain text file. So one thing that we've used a lot already, but already talked about is the command palette. So this is control shift P or command shift P on a Mac. And here you can search for and execute a lot of the commands that are built into VS Code. One really cool feature if you're working on a React project or a Node project in general is type in npm. And here you can see a bunch of options uh, for Node. But if we do npm run script at the top here, uh, this will show all of the options that are in your package.json file. And you can run them straight from here instead of having to run them on the command line. One of the most useful features of VS Code is the inbuilt terminal. We can get to that by doing control factic. You can see here I'm using ZSH as my terminal on a Mac, um, but I can also load up other terminals. So you can see here I'm going to do plus um, and I load up multiple terminals and switch between them. This is really useful if you've maybe got Docker running in the background, but you also need to run uh, something else. Um, in terms of you can see the other types of terminals that are available to you. Uh, so this will be different if you're running on a, on Windows. Uh, so you might have PowerShell 
here, for example. And we can also, you can see this little window, this little icon here, um, that allows you to split up your terminals. So you can see both of them at once. Another cool feature that I find myself using quite a lot, especially on um, C Sharp projects, is being able to click on a folder and then on here and do open an integrated terminal. And that's a great way to just quickly jump to a particular part of your code. Lastly, one really cool integration with VS Code, which makes it really useful, is its Git integration. So you can see here, you've got the source control icon. It gives you a great ability to use the functionality of Git without having to type all the commands all the time. Uh, so yes, you can type them straight in on the terminal. Um, so we we'll go back to our, our main folder here. Um, and we can type uh, git status and it will tell us that sort of thing. But this all does it for you in a nice UI. Uh, so let's just edit this file. Uh, I'm just going to break it a bit. <laughs> now, if your changes, once you've saved, don't load up straight away, uh, which sometimes I don't, you can click the refresh button and that will find your, your file. So it's the same thing as typing git status on the command line. Um, but it just gives you a nicer UI and it, it's um, much easier to add and remove files that you need to, to put in. Um, another cool feature is if you use the, the dots here, you can pick out particular things. So maybe you want to publish a new branch um, or add a new remote. All of the commands that you would normally use in Git are all here via the UI. So it's much safer to use these than it is to you know, accidentally type it in on the command line and get it wrong. Now, one extension that I really like, which works with Git, is called GitLens. Um, so we search for GitLens in extensions. You'll find here it's basically supercharged Git. Uh, now, what this does, it gives you a lot of uh, really great functionality directly inside your code base. If we go back to our file, we can see here on the current line you're on, it will tell you who edited that file, when it was edited, and the commit message as well. Uh, and if you hover over that, it will give you further details. Um, so you can even go to GitHub um, and see the, the commit there. I hope you like this video on VS Code tips and tricks. This is only my second video on YouTube, so please hit like and subscribe to help this channel out. Thank you.